right, so our app's taking shape. We have our discussions basically working and we need to do our replies next as well as figure out the new uh, UI for the channels, which isn't a big burden, um, but it will take some time to get going. So let's go ahead and jump right in. In the discussion, I wanna have a logged in user be able to reply. And to do that, I need to modify our views to include some partials. Uh, we've already set up our controller to work the way we want in terms of rendering the uh, replies. So here is a partial that is going to render the replies on the, dis the discussion at hand, and it's gonna loop through each. So within this partial, we'll have a loop of each partial or of each reply, if that makes sense. Um, it's kind of Rails just being smart there in terms of knowing what to do with a partial that looks like this. So going further, we need to create uh, some views that are replies. So we'll go ahead and do that. And I'll create a new folder called replies. And inside that, we're just going to have two partials. And well, okay, three, sorta. So two partials and one actual view, which will be the edit view. So I'm gonna do one, the first one that's the actual form, and it's gonna be html.erb. So let's dive into that one first. It's a simple form. Four, and it gets kind of tricky here because we wanna add, pass in two things which is the discussion ID and the discussion replies build. So we're creating a new reply uh, through this form. I'm also passing a parameter called remote true, and this is gonna let us do this with Ajax uh, for the sake of not having to reload the entire page once a person comments, so it appears instantly on the screen it's kind of just a nice experience overall. So let me type this out. And we have one field that is for the reply. So let's create an input. Input. And it will be the reply input. And then we'll pass input HTML. few parameters here. Class will be text area. And we'll give it a wrapper of false. And label HTML is class label. So we need to end the rails stuff there and then we need our button finally so we can just do button submit and then we can label it called leave a reply and give it a class a button and is info give it kind of a blue color okay cool So with that done, I think we should be able to render the fee, the form if we're signed in. I'm signed in currently, so let me go ahead and see this. I didn't save this file, so uh, I also need to create this partial, so it'll error out if I don't. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And Rails is smart to know that this is gonna look for a partial called reply, and that's based off of our model name. So I'm going to create one called reply.html.erb. And inside this is quite a bit of HTML, so I'll go ahead and type through it, but we're going to more or less just make it look like a user who is you know, posting a comment on a blog, so to speak. So bear with me here.
All right, guys, so this is a little confusing, but we've, we're basically working within the discussion view, rendering the replies. So the way this works is we're getting our discussion by the discussion ID and then grabbing the replies on it. So all the replies and then Rails is smart enough to know that this renders a partial called rep reply for each reply. So when that happens, it renders this reply partial with everything inside. And we have a gravatar image tag of the user who replied on the discussion, their username, when they replied, their actual response and then some tools to edit their reply or delete the reply. And this is a little confusing on the edit and deletion because you have to pass in both the discussion ID and the reply ID itself. So here we're getting the replies ID, replies discussion ID, I should say. And then the same is true for the deletion. We're passing an array here. That's kind of the same way, but we need both to be able to know where it's at on our model and our um, database. So if all goes right, we should be able to make a test response. And we don't have our JavaScript hook up, hooked up, but it should render there. So once we refresh the page, it should be there. And we have our edit. So when we go to edit now, it'll find the ID and we're still doing it edit template. So we need the template now, which we don't have yet. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new template and the replies folder called edit .html .erb. And in that will be another form and we can just pass in each one title and then is two for the class has text gray. and editing reply. And we need to pass in the form, a new form here, because we don't want to re render the same form in this case. We actually just want to pass in the reply we are t exactly editing and not all the replies. So it's kind of confusing in that right, but if you just render it down to what it is, it kind of makes sense. So we're getting the discussion, which is actually a discussion ID and then the reply ID. And if you're wondering where that's coming from, if you go to the replies and edit, we're getting it this way. So the discussion corresponds to the discussion ID and the reply is actually replying to, or applying to the discussion, which we found up here, and then finding the replies, all of them, and then finding the one that associates itself with this current ID. So that's, I'm sure confusing as all hell, but hopefully it's making a little sense. All right. So we're just going to have the field again of, in fact, I'm going to just go find that in our form, basically rendering the same thing. It's just a different form. And I'll change Leave a reply, we could say update reply, maybe. Just just to be a little trendy. And I think that's good. So if all goes right, this should render that edit. And I forgot the end. Or did I? Oh, I forgot the do. And then F. There we go. Simple form four, and I misspelled that. Sorry guys, it's late, so I'm looking over some things. What's going on now? Simple form, ah, I can't spell. Simple form four, there we go. Test and test updated, maybe update reply. There we go, so that's working. So next let's integrate the JavaScript side of things. So when I post a comment now, like uh, maybe second comment, you'll notice nothing happens, but I press the button. So that means, Hey, something did happen. And that's because on our controller, we 
made a format of JS. And I, you see, I put this comment here, which on the creation method, Rails is looking for the format which overrides the HTML one if you put this one, by the way. This one still happens, but you can render this as well. So they both fire. Anyway, Rails is smart enough to, based on the action you call it, it knows to render this specific thing. So in this case, we can create an, like an inline JS file, which is kind of weird feeling, but it works, which looks like this. And you can render Rails within your JavaScript, which is pretty cool. Uh, so we already have jQuery installed. I don't have it set up currently. I still need to add it to our application index file. So let me go ahead and type this out and then I'll add that for this to work. So I'm going to escape JavaScript and then render that reply, which is basically that partial we created. And this is going to be just, I'm going to close that bracket and then the other one and then make rails there. And then we're going to append to discussion replies, which don't forget the uh, semicolon here. The discussion replies is in our show template on our discussions show page. And it's this ID right here. We needed to wrap a container around this to in order to use the DOM to find something to append this reply to. So that's what we chose or what I chose in this case. So I still need to configure our JavaScript to use jQuery it doesn't by default in Rails 5. It does in later versions or earlier versions of Rails, I should say. So something to keep in mind. So in applications.js, uh, we can require jQuery at the top. Just do the same kind of comment. And you only need to just require jQuery. You don't need to do jQuery UI or whatever the repo tells you at this point because Rails has its own implementation of it, but we aren't using it to its full degree. I probably should get on board with that though. So if we go back to our view, our comments are rendering and each one is this, our comments, I mean reply, each one is this, which corresponds to one of these boxes. It's got all this stuff going on with it. And then below those, the form itself, which is, where are we at? In the show template right here it's this partial so it's in replies and reviews and then the form easy enough and then when we fire an edit command we go to this edit partial or view i should say rails doesn't scaffold that stuff out of the box that's something you have to kind of implement which is kind of a pain but it, it does work and i got it to work so i was happy about that uh, but now let's see if we can add another comment that's basically JavaScript based. There we go. So it adds it by default without refreshing the browser. Only problem I haven't dealt with yet, I just realized is clearing this form out. Uh, when you do press submit, it's probably a pretty easy fix if you want to tackle that on your own. Uh, but that should be about it for the reply. So let's go ahead and delete one, make sure that works and it does. And you can even do that with JS if you want, up to you. All right, so that's the the reply side of things. Let's do the channel, and that should do it for the views in the sense of creating UI. Uh, we'll have to come back and make that a little more enhanced for the users side of things, uh, but we'll get into that in a minute. So let's start on the channels. This one should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to make our form a little nicer, of course. So we'll start with the field control. And we'll pass the input in as the channel name, which we gave it from our initial model generation. And then class input comma wrapper false label HTML 
Oops. Class label. Cool. And then below that, we'll just have our submit button. Is info. So that should at least clean that up a bit. Now on our actual views, we can go on the edit view, for instance, and render our title a little nicer. And I'm just gonna get rid of these links below. So that's good. The new we'll do next. I want this to be basically all this stuff without that garbage. So we'll do a columns. And pass in a class called is centered, just to center the whole thing. And column is four, it's a really small form. I just want to enter a channel name. That's it. H one dot title that is three and cr create a new channel. And that should do it. So when we go to create a new one, it looks like this, which is fairly simple, right? So we can just do web design, create one. And there we go. So this view needs some love too. So let's go to the index page. And I think for brevity's sake, I'm going to just copy and paste this one. It's really nothing going on that isn't too crazy. There's some admin stuff, which I'll just comment out for now and come back. But I'm just adding a Bulma based table. And then we're rendering all the stuff you can do to the channel. If you so if you want to do it and then uh, within this view, we can have this role if someone were by chance to go to this view, which we could block off if we wanted to. Uh, you can go ahead and create a new channel if you want. So I'm gonna just comment this for now. Uh, this whole check should be before. I'm gonna just go ahead and make it for everything here. And then maybe we'll do like a else and I'll, f I'll make this work later, but we could just say like, um, you don't have access to this. Something like that. So that's just going to display, but we'll get that working in a minute. I think that's about it for the UI guys. So what will be next is more or less making things hidden by the user role or an admin role. So I think we'll tackle that in the very next video. Uh, so I will see you in that one.